You're Not ready. One. Okay. Um, this is the June 14th meeting of the Disability Access Advisory Committee. Um, we are all present, but Maureen can do a roll call so that all the names are. Okay. Uh, Myra? Here. Uh, Xander? <laughs> Here. Uh, Ruth? Oh, she's muted, but I, I saw her. Oh. Okay, I'm here. Oh, great. Elise? Here. Saren? She said she was coming back. Oh, she's yes. here, but I can't hear her. Oh, she's here. Oh, you're here. Sorry. Oh, you're right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Sorry. Marty? Here. And uh, also present Tori. is uh, Pat DeAngelis. Uh, what about Tori? Oh, to do I see Tori? Sorry. Uh, Tori's yeah. not here. Okay, so Tori is missing at the moment. Okay. Okay, and then right. uh, Tori, and then also present is uh, town council member Pat DeAngelis, uh, sustainability coordinator Stephanie Chicarello, and we will have um, a rep representative from Aspen Heights in attendance. Um, they're probably just running a couple of minutes. Oh, she's here. Um, Rachel, uh, we will uh, make you a panelist, um, but first we'll have Stephanie give her presentation to the board. Um, okay, so this is about the um, bicycles, um, bicycle stations? Correct. Okay. So I'm going to share my screen. So if you just give me one moment. Okay, can you all see that okay? Do you need me to make it bigger? Perfect. Um, can it, folks see, okay. see this? You're going to need to describe it because I can't sure. see it at all, no matter how big you make it. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna <laughs> okay. It. Will do. All right. Thanks for letting me know that, actually, because okay. that, that helps. Okay. All right. So the first map I'm putting up right now is of all the existing locations of the bike stations for the Valley Bike Regional Bike System in Amherst. Um, these are just the town sponsored or town owned stations. These are not the ones on the UMass campus because the University of Massachusetts oversees the placement of those stations. So these are the ones in town. The, the furthest north is outside. There's a, there are dots representing each location. And the one furthest north is at the North Amherst uh, outside of the North Village or what was previously the North Village apartment complex on North Pleasant Street. Uh, the most, the southern one below that is at Kendrick Park. And then just below that is a circle representing the one in front of Town Hall. And then to the west is a station on East Hadley Road. Um, I'm sorry, on University Drive. And then there's, um, to the east is a proposed, there's a dot that says proposed, and that is on the intersection of College Street and Northeast and Southeast Street. And then further south is uh, a location on East Hadley Road. And then below that, the furthest south is a red dot that says proposed. And that one is at the Pomeroy Village intersection. So the two that are identified as proposed are the two locations that I'll be discussing with you today. So the next um, image that I'm putting up is an image of the existing bike stations. This is one from that's located at the University of Amherst campus. And this doesn't show the wayfinding station panel, which is the, the panel is the thing that's sort of a vertical, um, vertical structure that has a map um, on it that has a, that has a map of the, uh, the network and where the stations are located. Um, this doesn't show that, but that is on each of the each of the stations, and the ones that we're proposing would have one of those as well. And sorry, and the next map I'm going to uh, pull up here is the proposed Southeast Street location. So again, it's at the corner of Southeast and College Street. And there's a, a dot that is just showing this location in reference to the, 
to like a, a big overview of that intersection. So it's just showing where the station is proposed and that's to the um, south of the, south right, south of the, of the bank. Um, and that's where the proposed station is located or is being proposed to be located. And now I'm showing a map that has the dimensions of the station in that location. So the stations are seven feet in width and uh, 42 feet in length. So they're pretty long, but they do actually um, take up that space. And there's a concrete pad because this is a lawn area that we're looking at right now. Uh, there would have to be a concrete pad that would be laid down in order to support the bikes being installed in that location. And the docks, the um, stations come with docking um, units that are each connected to one another. And that is where the bikes are placed when they're, uh, when they're returned or taken from the station. Those docks actually provide some electricity to the bike to charge them. These are all electric assist bicycles, meaning that they have a motor and they have um, they have a unit that will actually be charged that will provide the power to the to the bicycle when it's in use and the power source is located for the whole docking system is located within the wayfinding station so it's sort of up underneath the wayfinding station so it's covered and not exposed and the next the next map that i'm showing is just a kind of a property view it's pretty much the same um, map that I, same configuration that I just showed of the configuration of the uh, docking station, but it's, it's just a locus, so it doesn't really give you much more information. So I'm going to move on from there to the next proposed location, which is on West Street, which is just north of, um, of Pomeroy Lane on the Pomeroy Lane side of the West, uh, West Pomeroy intersection. And that location is before, it's, it's north of the Monin Dove building. So this location, um, there is a building, but it does not appear to be in active use at the moment. So there is a business property there, but it's not really actively in use. It is on a lawn area. Um, and as I say, it's north of the Monin Dove. The reason why we chose this location is because uh, in front of the Moan and Dove or some of the other businesses, there was a, con a conflict of vehicle traffic moving in and out of parking spaces. And in this location, we don't contend with that at all. Um, so it's a safer location. I should say that the reason why we've chosen all of these locations is because this funding that we received to install these stations is from a federal grant. It's a congestion mitigation and air quality grant. This is the same grant funding that we received to put in the other stations. And there are requirements that in order to locate these stations that we have to adhere to. So one of them is that they have to all be in the right of way. So the two stations that I'm proposing to you now are both in the right of way. At the Pomeroy intersection, there aren't many places that we could adequately uh, situate these stations because there wasn't, literally wasn't enough space and they weren't in the right of way. So- Do you define location, right of way as you're using it? Sure, the right of way is um, the, the way that is in the, the public way that the town oversees. So it's not on private property it. um, and it's okay. within the, the corridor, the travel corridor. Yep. So um, this, this has to be within the right of way. They also have to be in a densely populated area. So both of these locations were chosen because they are um, very close in proximity to um, multi family housing units locations. Uh, they also have to be near um, a public transit stop. So both of these stations are also fairly near to a bus st stop. They can be near train stations, you know, and other transit stops. But in our case, uh, bus stops are, are the most um, popular and readily available stops. Um, so it's near a public stop. It's in the right of way. It's in a densely popula populated area. So all of these criteria are met with these two locations. So the next map is just, again, um, a closer view of that location that we're proposing that shows the dimensions of the station on that uh, lawn area in front of the business on West Street. So 
that's pretty much all of the slides that I have to show you. Um, but as I said, the reason why we're, you know, we're proposing these specific locations is because they meet all of the criteria. And these are the ones that have been reviewed by the um, town manager and the DPW superintendent and the DPW superintendent believes these to be the, the best locations um, for these particular stations. Okay, does anyone have any questions? It, yeah. Go ahead, Ruth. Yeah, uh, it, where, where is the station gonna be in relationship to the roundabout that they're gonna be putting in over right. there? So I think um, on, um, so I'm assuming you're talking about the West Pomeroy Village location right. or the Pomeroy Village location. So that would be Pomeroy, north, yeah. it would be north of the roundabout. Okay, uh, thank you. You have two proposed locations, right? For the so these for each are each one of them. You have two. There's um there's one proposed location for so there's one proposed location for Southeastern College Street, and there's one proposed oh. location for West Street. I was just yes, showing you two different um, maps of the same. I was under location. the impression from the map you sent us that there were some choices A, B, and C, or one, two, and three. Right, so I apologize. So I revised the um, I revised the presentation given the input from the town manager and the DBW superintendent to to focus on just one of the locations in each in each place. So are one, they the furthest from the most north from the roundabout and the most south from the uh, intersection at Route Nine? Um, so for the so for the intersection at Route Nine, it's the second option, which is um, in between. It's not the one closest to the intersection, nor is it the one furthest. It's the in between location. It's on the lawn, um, uh, just north of the sidewalk. And to add, uh, Myra, and, um, so uh, for the proposal for the. Southeast Street at the corner of Southeast and Route 9. Uh, it would be street, uh, green, um, sort of like a tree belt, sidewalk, then the bike station. So there would be a buffer between um, the road uh, with the tree belt, the sidewalk, and then the bike station. So it wouldn't be between. I guess I was concerned about uh, how close these would be exactly to the bus stop or right. to where people would be crossing the street so that people wouldn't get tangled up in them when they were trying to find crosswalks and other things. Um, so when I was told about the pictures that you sent, and I wish you had sent us some written material, not just pictures, but when I was told about the pictures, my first response, and frankly, my husband's as well, is, the one by the Pomeroy should be the northernmost one that you presented. I don't know what was presented because we don't even know where the roundabout is going to, how big it's going to be yet. Right. So okay. we're um, we're looking at existing conditions right now. So this location is north of this. No, this is pretty north far. You know, it's north of the bus stop. It's not right next to it. It's not directly adjacent to it. It's further north of it. Right. So is it the is it the northern more, the more northern of the two you sent us in the picture? Yes, and so okay. in that location they're pretty close together. And I will say that these stations are very likely to be field adjusted when they're actually installed. So even where I'm proposing to you now, they'll be in that general location. But there are, there may be um, circumstances that may cause the, or necessitate the need to move them you know, right or left or north or south. They, so they'll, they'll be adjusted um, in the field by the installation crew. And when you say that, so, you, you're talking about inches or feet. You're not talking about new locations. They wouldn't be a new location. No, they wouldn't no. be a new, an entirely new location. But the two locations that were proposed for West Street, those are very close to one another. They really don't differ all that much. Um, okay. It was more a matter of having the bikes installed closer you know, sort of right adjacent to the street 
or further back to the property line. So as proposed now, the the bike station itself would be closer to the property line. Okay. So what do you need from us? It doesn't seem like we have very much in the way of uh, input to give you. Well, if there are things that you're concerned about, um, you know, those are certainly things that I would oh, okay. convey. So, okay. Well, there are certainly things I'm concerned about, but how about anybody else? Let's hear what everybody else has to say first. Hmm. Okay, um, my, my concern on Pomeroy is because it's so far from the roundabout, where the roundabout's going to be. Is there any plan for a crosswalk um, between those, that huge apartment complex across the street from the proposed location? So I can't speak to the um, to the roundabout. I don't. I have not even seen proposed plans for that. Um, I know, as far as I'm aware, it's still um, in the planning stages. So I don't. I I can't speak to that. However, mm -hmm. what we could say is that, um, you know, this this committee would like to see some kind of a crosswalk adjacent to the the station, which would be a good idea. Yeah, I think that's what we need. Especially because if you've got kids coming from the other areas and, they, and they're coming across, they're not going to go all the way down to the roundabout. Okay. Great. Thank you. Anybody else? This is not specific to this particular set of maps, but is there any conversation about potentially having uh, hand cycles as part of this program at any point in the near 10 years? <laughs> so, yeah, so I know that in the past, um, there have been um, discussions about potentially three-wheeled bicycles as well. Um, okay. I just think, so this is a private company. Okay. And right now, that's just simply not being offered. I know that there okay. have been there's been communication about it. I just don't know that it's, um, they're not being developed as fast as we'd like them to be and they're not being adopted as fast as we'd like them to be. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? I have a question, Elise. I don't have a, ha a raised hand. Um, That's okay, just here. go ahead. Um, I'm just thinking as a pedestrian and people who ride bicycles, is this, are these play? I don't know if my question is going to make sense, but people getting on and off these bicycles, are they going to like interfere with pedestrian traffic uh, on sidewalks trying to get to and from the bike racks? That's an excellent question. Um, we no. do currently have, um, we, we, so we currently do have stations that are located adjacent to sidewalks. Um, yeah. The, so I would say the, the West Street location is not likely to really have much pedestrian traffic just mm -hmm. based on where it is. Um, there's not, you know, there's currently not um, a sidewalk and there, I, I don't okay. know if there's one that's going to be installed and connected through. It might lead up to it potentially, but I don't know that it would lead through so that there'd be a continuous pathway for pedestrians. The one on Southeast Street would be located adjacent to a sidewalk, but um, typically what we've experienced is there's not enough pedestrian, you know, congestion of pedestrians, typically mm. walking by these that there's been a problem of people just stopping and waiting to pull out the bike or people stopping and waiting for someone to do so. Um, so it's really just a um, it's a matter of just people, you know, being courteous with one another as they they normally would be as they're walking along the sidewalk um, uh, or taking the bike out. Most, you know, we haven't really had a lot of um, issues with mm -hmm. there being a heavy pedestrian traffic that it's been a problem. And okay. as I, I've guys. just had, had experiences where even with a regular bike rack, you know, they go up on the sidewalk and they cut you right off if you're walking. Right. And if you're vision impaired like me, I can't, you know, I can't hear them and I can't mm -hmm. see them till I'm being going to be hit. Right, right. So I have a concern about, you know, people like myself and uh, Myra, you know, yep. getting hit by somebody coming through on one of those to get to one of those racks or from one of those racks. Right. Um, I think, so I'm going to double check, but I know that 
you know, there are there are certainly guidelines and safety mm -hmm. guidelines that are when people sign up for this system, there are, you know, there are recommendations and guidelines issued for people's safety. Okay. So um, that's one of the things that I think that's a great point to make. And I, I could make a suggestion too, that that's something that's added to the website. That yeah. when people are getting or returning bikes, that they be especially careful of pedestrians if they're crossing sidewalks. Thank you. Sure. Yeah. No, that's a great recommendation. Great. Thanks. That's Anybody it for else? me. I, I have a question. This is Saran. Yep. Um, are these uh, two stations you're thinking about close to bus stops? Yes. They're not right next to them, but they are fairly near to them. And when you say fairly near, you, we're talking about, uh, you know, 100 to 200 feet away. Yeah. So that's, oh, that's good. very close. Yeah, that's very good. They're, they're easily, yeah, they're easily accessed. The bikes are easily accessed from the, from the getting off a bus, but they're not necessarily um, right next to them so that they're going to be infringing upon people getting on and off the bus. Okay. Can you describe uh, how this system works? I don't know that I've heard about trouble here, but I know that in the blindness world, these e-bikes are a major problem in cities where people are riding them all over the sidewalks and leaving them all over the sidewalks. They just, you know, they take the bike, they go where they want to go and they deposit the bike, whether they put it in the rack or not, you know, there are people that are hired to go around and pick up bikes and put them in the racks. Um, yep. And so I need to know a lot more about how this whole system works, because even when a bike is not in motion, if it's lying in the middle of the sidewalk, it's a real problem. So uh, can you tell us what, you know, how this whole thing works? How much do people pay for these things? When do they pay? Is it really possible for them to use a bike and not put it away and still... You, you know, because um, I know, I, I, as I said, I have no personal experience with this and I've not heard about it an issue here, but it is a major problem in big cities. So there are different, right. So there are different companies that have different rules and guidelines for using their bikes and using their systems. And one of the reasons we went with the company that we did was because um, there was more assurance that that they monitor more closely and that people aren't allowed to necessarily leave their bikes just laying in the middle of the street. That being said, people can't, people can't just leave a bike laying somewhere, they would be fined. So there is a fining mechanism or um, they wouldn't be allowed, you know, if, they, if there was a continued abuse of that, um, of the bicycles, they wouldn't be allowed to continue to use the system. So there are some guidelines and protocols for people using the system. Um, people are encouraged to return them to stations. Um, very rarely have bikes been left um, somewhere other than a designated station. Again, there's incentive, you know, there's a, there's a, a higher fee if people leave them elsewhere and they have to go be retrieved. There's a higher fee that people would have to pay and to do that. But again, they're they're meant to be left and um, locked somewhere. They're not meant to be just left on the sidewalk or left in the middle of somewhere. We haven't we haven't had any issues with that at all since yeah. we've had the system. Okay. No, not at all. Not even seriously. Not even once. That's not no. been an yeah. issue. Yeah. So as I said, I haven't heard about it locally, but I know that there is a problem for um, people with mobility issues. You know, even on sidewalks, if you can't see where they are, that's one thing. But they do, people drive them on sidewalks. Oh, that's um, not good. Yeah. And so there, what are the rules? So, I mean, because I think whether you place the, the, you know, the dock here or there really isn't the issue for me. The issue of safety has to do safe. with what happens with the bikes when they're not in the dock, mm -hmm. either lying on the sidewalk or um, being ridden by people who don't follow rules. And we all know there are a few of those people. So, <laughs> yes, well, so, you know, the, the guidance as to where bikes can be ridden um, is not 
the control of the of the company. I mean, there right. are there are rules and regulations in Amherst, and those are the rules and regulations that people need to follow. Good so luck. that's not you know that's not something that we necessarily have control over. So you work for the company. I work for the town. No, I'm the town sustainability. Right. So we do have control over. Well, we, the town, the town right. has rules and regulations for people when they're using this bicycle or any bicycle as to where whether or not they can ride on sidewalks or not. The enforcement mechanism of that is is what I'm saying is kind of beyond the control of the the operator of the of the system. Mm. Right. No, I understand that. So, I mean, we can have a motion to um, approve these locations. I mean, I don't know that anybody would object to this. Um, it's a much larger question. And I, I guess I'm, I'm, I'm very glad that you brought this whole topic to this committee, um, but I really do, I don't know the regulations um, and I don't know how they're being enforced. And I don't know a lot of other things that doesn't have anything to do with the question of the day, but it may have something to do with the safety of pedestrians with disabilities in Amherst. And that's what I wanted. You know, maybe that has to be a different conversation with different people. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, I, anyway, does anybody else feel the need to have that conversation? I do. Yeah. You do? Because yeah. you bring a very good uh, perspective into this from the uh, uh, from the point of view of visual impairment, maybe yeah. we should request that we review the procedures they have, the rules they have. I have a concern that it's just adding more bicycles to an already existing problem. Where I can't tell you how many times I've nearly gotten run over from people who don't follow the rules and to add more of these vehicles yeah. to that scares me. Yeah. Um, well, you know, these are, you know, they are presented as an alternative transportation option to uh, more cars. So the idea is that, you know, when folks are using these, they're not using them for a leisurely, afternoon ride, they're really specifically using them to get from a point A to point B. And I know that's not directly um, speaking to what you just mentioned, but I think the idea is that they're they're not really meant to be just taken out for a quick ride. They're they're meant to be taken, you know, from um, from a bus stop to maybe a store and maybe back again if someone's running an errand or to a destination and then back again to be returned. Um, they're not really, they're not really used for pleasure riding. Mm. I don't know. I think people on regular bikes also do the same kind of type of riding. It's, you know, if you're on a sidewalk, it's not a leisurely ride. It's to get somewhere and they just don't want to ride in the street. Right. Well, I, I think what you're, what you all are bringing up really um, speaks to the need for more dedicated bike lanes. And right. also more enforcement to right. the people who are breaking the rule. Yeah, <laughs> but you know, it's very hard to regulate individual behavior. I mean, we have rules and regulations when people are driving and they ignore them all the time. Mm -hmm. So yeah. unless you're gonna have a police officer in every corner to enforce well, the regulation, uh, you know, it's problematic and it, it's always gonna continue to be problematic for people true. who are not you know, who, who are not as law abiding as we would like them to be. True. I'm wondering if I could ask a question. Yeah, sure. Yeah, can, you, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Thank oh, okay, you. Because I had to unmute. I had to mute myself. Okay. Um, I, Stephanie, you said there are re town regulations. Uh, I don't know of them written into the bylaws. So can you tell me where they are so I can look them up? There wasn't when I, so I, when the general bylaws were crafted there had been a non-motorized vehicle um okay. bylaw so okay uh, and i because i had gone to the the um transportation advisory committee this is during the select board days prior to town council yeah. so and i had spoken to them about it so um 
and I don't, and I, I apologize, I haven't looked at where that ended up in the general bylaws, but I would think that there, that should be um, in, in the general bylaws somewhere, and okay. I'd be happy to I'll find it I and send it to you. It down. I'll see if I can track it down, because I don't know it either, um, and I, yeah, and then I can share that with the committee if Myra would like me to. Sure, and, but these are, these are not motorized vehicles, but they are not entirely manually run vehicles. Correct. They're sort of in the right. middle. Exactly. And there might not be regulations yeah, um, from from yesteryear that pertain to this kind of vehicle. Yeah, um, they do go fast. You know how fast they can go like 20, 30 miles an hour. No, right? they are not a lot. No, uh, I mean, any bicycle can go that fast as someone who has been a bike rider in the past, a cyclist in the past. Any bike can go that fast. But these are actually um, the speed limit is about 15 miles an hour. That's okay. the maximum. Yeah, I can go that fast on my tandem. And tell you the truth, it's fast. I mean, if you get hit by a bike going 15 miles an hour and you you happen to be in mid stride, you're on the ground. Mm -hmm. And 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 it's not and it's it's an electric vehicle, so it's you know, it's a power assist vehicle, so it's not like the person who is riding it is going to you know, th there's there's resistance on the other end. It's not just like somebody's going to fall and stop they're going to be able to continue to go. So there are reasons for pedestrians um, of all stripes to be nervous about this, particularly pedestrians with any kinds of disabilities. Um, and I do think that it's worth looking into uh, the bylaw, whoever asked that question, Pat, you did, right? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Um, you know, I think it's worth looking into the bylaw as it pertains to this kind of vehicle. This is not a normal bicycle. Um, this is a bicycle that doesn't have only manual control. You know, the person who, who's riding it, who hits you, isn't going to stop and, you know, isn't, it isn't going to impact them because they're, they have electric power, right? So um, I, I think that we do need to have some real discussions about this before it becomes a problem here. As I said a few times, I have not heard about it being a problem here, but I know that it is one in lots of places. And it might be that this particular company is better than most. And it might be that the people here are more interested in putting the bikes away. Um, and, you know, but um, I, I just wanna make sure we have regulations and um, that people know the regulations. Maybe we need banners across the street that, you know, that tell people or, or well-placed to tell people who have these bikes what the rules are. And maybe I'm looking for trouble where there isn't any, but I'm afraid that that's not true. So if, if I may, um, so in, in, um, throughout the Commonwealth, um, there are, um, a boilerplate, uh, bylaw about, uh, cyclists in downtown, uh, zoning districts. Um, and so in, in the, our general bylaw, the, um, there is a provision, um, under section 3.13 conduct on public ways. Mm -hmm. uh, it says under uh, C, it says no person shall operate a personal transportation vehicle upon any public sidewalk or public pedestrian easement within the downtown general business district or urban renewal project area, except within areas at times or under conditions as may be designated by the town council. So what this is saying is that no one should be on riding their bike right. on sidewalks right. in the downtown um, BL, the uh, BL in the BG zoning district uh, in particular, um, or that's prohibited. And, you know, I, I think there is an enforcement of $50 for a fine and it is, you know, uh, under the, enforcement of the police department um so i don't know how you know if if this is a, a problem here in amherst or if it's not um but that would yeah. be something for the police department to um okay well I, it's I, a different it's a different topic it's an associated topic it's an associate um, right? and i would say that the system has been operating for two years now already um and you know i i would say that we um have gone without incident. I don't certainly don't want to say that doesn't mean it's never possible. Just right. that, you know, just that I think, I think some of the issues that have arisen also tend to be in more urban areas mm -hmm. that are more mm -hmm. densely populated with more traffic, more yep. people. 
you know, I think part of the reason why this works here well is because it isn't that densely populated and we don't have as much uh, vehicle traffic as you would in, in the, you know, in, in the bigger urban centers like mm -hmm. New York or Boston. And even, and I would say even to some of the problems about bikes being left around everywhere, I don't even hear about that happening in, um, you know, in, uh, in Boston or, or Somerville or Cambridge as much. I mean, I know those are places that have these bike systems and I haven't really heard of, of many problems. Um, uh, okay. I just want to point out that in the last 15 months, there hasn't a bit of, haven't been a lot of people out. Mm -hmm. Right. Exa well, exactly. So, that's true. Not, not a true, good, good point. Period. <laughs> good point. Um, but I've <laughs> seen though. I live. So, I live next to the North Village one, and mm -hmm. it is often empty. And there are. I see people on those bikes all of the time. So that it is still no matter. And even through the worst of COVID, I think that that was it was used not okay. for its intended purpose of getting you from point A to point B for a quick errand. I think it was honestly used by people who didn't have access, financial access to buying bicycles and used it as an exercise or just to get me out of the house kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Cause I saw people using it constantly. They were used a lot. And I, I think, yes. that, and also it, it was an alternative to, to taking the bus too, for some folks, yep. um, really more just as a, a public safety, health safety yep. issue. So I just want uh, to check in with time. To approve, yeah, we need a I motion have a to question. approve. I have a question, a very quick question. Excuse me for my ignorance, but uh, do bicycle users need to have some kind of a certificate, are they, or license, like saying? Nope. Nope. No. No. Well, you know, like, it, it, how do we expect them to know the rules of the road if there is not really required for them through going through some certificate? They actually do when they sign up to be part of the program, they actually do have to read through some some rules and guidelines of using bicycles on the road and bicycle safety. So they actually do have to read that and sign off when they become a member of the system. It's okay. not a certification, but it is, they do have to actually read it and sign off on it. Okay. Does anyone have a motion of, or do we have to approve this? I mean, it doesn't seem like we do, but was you, did you come looking for approval or just for it, giving us information? Um, some giving you information, getting some feedback. I think you brought up some good points that I would like to share, you know, both in the presentation to the council, but also, um, to the company, you know, for itself, for the bigger network. Um, I thought there were some good, really great points that you all brought up. And just to, um, just to review some of those comments, um, I heard that uh, someone suggested that a crosswalk be provided adjacent to the bike share location on West Street, uh, Route 116. Um, I heard another member suggest that the company itself um, look into um, hand cycles um, for for uh, future um, installation in, in Amherst and other communities. Um, I think that was, oh, and then um, Stephanie uh, had suggested that, that on the website, um, there could be a uh, reminder to folks that when they're getting on and off the bike, um, as they're approaching the station that they should be, you know, respectful of their, you know, this, their surroundings and, and um, not be disruptive to the pedestrians passing by. Was there anything else? Pertinent to this discussion, probably not. Just a quick Maureen, could you send me the gen Mass General Law um, bylaw num uh, ordinance number that you quoted. I just looked at our bylaws and I didn't see. Oh, so it's I actually, uh, I referenced the Amherst bylaw. You did, which, what's the number? It's the revised June 4th, 2021. Yeah. Yep. Uh, section 3.13, conduct mm -hmm. on public ways. Mm -hmm. okay. And it's, it's a, a letter section C. Uh, C. June 1st, 2021 bylaws? Yep. I'll, I'll June, 4th. June 4th. June 4th? Yeah, if you could, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I couldn't find it when I just went into the bylaws. So 
but I have an older copy. Yeah, it's probably, I know it was there previously, it probably just has a new section number. Yep, I'll send that along. Okay, cool. Thank you, Stephanie. This was enlightening. Great. Thank you very much. Thanks. Right on. Um, and do we have the people from uh, Aspen Heights? Uh, we do. Rachel um, Hart is joining us uh, from Aspen Heights. Um, th thanks so much, Rachel, for being able to meet with us and and then and then be flexible with rearranging. We were supposed to meet tomorrow, but um, we decided to meet today instead. So thanks so much for your flexibility. Yeah, of course. So if you could just introduce yourself um, and, um, and before you do that, so the, the at the last DAAC meeting, there was a discussion about, well, what does a, a an ADA unit look like and feel like? And, um, they um we had we're aware that you know aspen heights is ready to um have um ready to have occupants and so the thought was oh that's a brand new building maybe we could reach out to them and see what what uh you know a brand new ada unit looks like as and as a sort of learning experience we have at least three people on this committee who would need accessible apartments so they know what's required by them and we would love to know what your it's apartments actually worth, have. It's also worth pointing out that we have three people on this committee who would need accessible housing, who have very different understand uh, needs and ideas of what that means to them because of mm -hmm. their own independence levels and uh, et cetera. Okay. All right, well, um, did you guys want me to just uh, get started with kind of a walkthrough of one of our EDA units? Sure. Can you tell us which floor plan mm -hmm. we're looking at? Yep, yeah. uh, so we're in a one bedroom. It would be considered, if you were to go to our website, it'd be considered a Steamboat A floor plan, uh, which is about 500 square feet. Um, obviously this is going to be laid out a bit differently, but size-wise it's the same. And I, I'm, I'm sharing my screen. And so Rachel, is this the floor plan that you were yes. talking about? Right, so that's the, the usual floor plan of a Steamboat A of how it's laid out in a usual um, Steamboat A unit. Um, however, I sent you that uh, snapshot the of the blueprint of the actual, this is unit 239, just so you can kind of see it, how it is laid out a little bit differently, but size-wise it's the same. Got it. Okay, so this is the exact unit, unit 239 is, is what you're standing in right now and you are going to show us, walk us through what, what that looks like. Okay, so I'll stop the share here so then okay. you, you can show. Okay, perfect. All righty. And then I brought, <laughs> brought my associate Blake so he can kind of hold the, the phone for me while, while I walk. <laughs> That'd be a little bit easier. Team effort. <laughs> Exactly. All right. So, okay. so, that. All right. All right. So, I'm just going to start with the front coming through the front door here. So, we have the two different size peepholes at two different height levels here, which could be useful, obviously, depending on you know what the, what the disability might be. Um, so, that's to start there. Um, if you look over here. Um, everything's a little bit with light switches or just a little bit lower and then the outlets that were a little bit higher um, just to make it I guess a little bit easier for bending over if you had to plug something in um, and then if we go in over here we do have our washer and dryer in here and this is different from every other unit we have in all the other units there's stackable washers and dryers um, but in this unit we have them um, you know, next to each other and, and they're the, the front loading um, just to allow for things to be easier. Um, the shelf is a little bit lower as well. Um, and the what? Could you say that one more time? Okay. The shelf above, so there's a shelf above the washer and dryer and that shelf is lower. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. And then it, was, even it have, still looks like it would be kind of hard to reach because it's above the washer and dryer, but it's lower than what it would be. 
it, yeah, it, it might be, you know, I, like, it's, you know, depending on obviously what the, the circumstances are for the individual in the apartment. Um, I'm sure obviously depending on whoever moved in here, our maintenance team would be more than happy to adjust things for them to make it easier. Um, this one's just the standard that they put it at. Rachel, I hate to ask you this. Yeah. How tall are you? Just, but it's purely yeah. for perspective, I promise. How tall yeah. are you? I'm only five feet tall, so. Okay. That gives me a really good understanding of, yeah. Yeah. of it. Thank you. I yeah. appreciate it. <laughs> no problem. All right. And then just over here, we even have the electrical panel was made lower, just in case there was ever like a power outage or something. Usually these panels are up here. You can see usually it's located like way up here, but for these units, they are lower just in case, like I said, if there's ever a power outage or something, you can still easily pull this open um, no matter what height level you're at. <laughs> um, so um, if you go over here, then here's like the, the common area closet. And again, the shelf is, as you see, it's a lot lower. They're normally it's probably up here. Um, so. And then if we go into the kitchen area, um, go over here. So the sink area, normally there's a cabinet under here, but this has been left open, you know, in case obviously if someone is uh, wheelchair bound, you know, it's easier to roll up here um, and get to the sink area. The dishwasher is a little different too, so it's a little bit easier to grab and pull down. Um, and then the microwave is um, on the countertop versus like an overhead microwave that are in most of our units. Um, so a lot of the easier access there. And then over here, the stove, um, stove top is a little different as well. Um, so normally it's a stove and oven that are connected. Um, but here we have the open stove top again to, um, like if you needed to roll up, um, it's easier to get in and out of. Um, and then there's also here, this pulls out to allow for, you could probably use this as a cutting board if needed, um, but it's also if you're trying to pull something out of the oven so that you could easily place it down somewhere if you're pulling out, you know, something hot out of the oven, you have somewhere to put it down easily. Um, and then, and same thing, so like this uh, vent hood, you know, obviously the switches, there are switches up here, but it's um, hooked up to be used down here so that you don't need to be, you know, need to reach this. You can reach it from here and turn it on. And then obviously then the cabinets are, are all a bit lower as well. Um, they're honestly like my perfect height cabinets. <laughs> so, um, and then the fridge is different as well. Um, most of our units have the refrigerator freezer that's you know, separated where the freezer door is on top and the refrigerator door is on the bottom, but this is the, the dual-sided one instead. Um, so again, it's a little bit easier to open. Any questions so far before I move on to anything can, else? Can you open a refrigerator door to see how far it can open? Is it a side by side? How did yeah. you? What kind of? It's a side yeah, by side. No, that, yeah, side that, by side. Yeah, that yeah. challenges. It, it creates a challenge because I have a similar situation and it's very difficult for me to reach out for something from the refrigerator. Okay. When, when it doesn't flush open with the door, uh, with the wall, okay. and it just limits the space you can go. Okay. Oh, so it doesn't fully open? No. Aha, uh -huh. not enough space. I mean, it opens. I mean, this one can go like this. Oh, this it can. Goes. Okay. Oh, that's yeah. good. This one, yeah. you're, there you go. That, that's all the way back. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah. Okay, good. Okay. That's good. All right. So, and then let's see. If we move on here. Um, what else is out? So this is all, the thermostat is also lower um, for easier access. These are out also usually a little bit higher up on the wall, but the thermostat has been placed lower um, for easier access. I think that's really it for this is the living room area. Again, I pointed out the, the outlets um, are a little bit higher to make it a little bit easier to get to. 
All right, and then moving into the bedroom here. Uh, okay, so over here is the bedroom closet. Again, the shelf is a little bit lower in here um, to allow for easier access. Um, I don't know if I pointed out in the other room, but the, the blinds are nice and long, so you can reach them no matter what. And then if we move into the bathroom. Uh, there is a sink over here that, again, there's no uh, cabinet underneath it um, to allow easier access in and out of. Um, and then if you move over to the toilet area, there are grab bars. And there is enough space in between here, too. Um, again, if you were wheelchair bound, there, you know, there's enough room to, to put the wheelchair there. Um, and then if you go over here, the shower is a walk-in shower here. You do have the, the seat in here and the grab bars as well as well. You could use, you know, the, the movable shower head um, or use the standard one, um, but it does have a few options in there. And then over here, you have some, a linen closet that's a little bit lower. That's a little bit easier to get to versus the ones we have in some of the other units. Rachel, I have another question. Yeah. Is the uh, the seat in the shower could mm -hmm. it be rolled up? So the so. person touches that with yeah. a wheelchair. All right, very good. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Um, I have just one it, okay. about the kitchen. Is the stove is that a flat top? It is. Okay, I was just curious about that. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I have a question. Um, so mm. it seems like this apartment is really checking all the boxes mm -hmm. about, about accessibility for people who use wheelchairs um, yeah. and maybe scooters. The okay. question is, is it checking any of the boxes for blind people who can't operate digital washing machines um, mm -hmm. digital dishwashers, stovetops or ovens that are just completely touch screen that um, mm -hmm. are, you know, that if you touch it, it turns on without even, so you could, if you could be feeling your way to find the little, the little mm -hmm. uh, markers you've put on, but if you touch okay. the thing, it turns on. So That's there is such, there is such a thing as accessibility of appliances and it's a really big issue. Some appliances right now work on smartphones. Okay. Um, and some appliances, you know, there are like you can buy an induction an induction stove top such that the heat from the cooktop doesn't come out around the, the pot. It just is where the pot is. So that's a lot safer. It's more expensive, but it's yeah. a lot safer. And for I know a, a person who is blind who actually has to hire someone to come in and do her laundry. There's a completely independent person. But because yeah. the apartment house that she lives in, which is not a low income apartment house, it is mm -hmm. the apartment house she lives in has washers and dryers that cannot be used um, by somebody who can't see and operate the touch screens. And um, so it, it didn't used to be an issue, but mm -hmm. is it has become an issue that you can rent an apartment, even a high end, probably even the highest end are most inaccessible because of all the touch screens. So I wonder if you've thought about that. And if you did have a blind or seriously visually impaired person who couldn't operate the washing machine, what could be done about it? That's why I asked about the stove because that stove looks like a danger zone for a blind person. Yeah. Apparently there are blind people who use cooktops like that, but they use induction cooktops. They look the same, but they aren't the same. You know what I mean by an induction stove? Yeah, why don't we move back over to the kitchen just so I can. So I guess I could see what you mean. Yeah, if you were, you know, visually impaired, uh, there is no any, you know, I guess real guidance here. Um, so I mean, I don't. Again, these appliances were chosen well before I was hired and got here. So this is already, you know, 
decisions yeah. that were made, unfortunately. Well, nobody would think about this yeah. unless it became an issue for you. Mm-hmm. This is, you know, I've been in appliance stores and the guys in the appliance store go, oh yeah, look at that. You couldn't possibly use this. And, you know, they're not happy about it. They sell the right. stuff. Um, but there are some that work um, mm-hmm. with a smartphone. Right. Um, you know, you can turn everything on with a smartphone and that that is becoming, it, it is an issue. So let's say mm-hmm. you had an applicant for living there um, mm-hmm. who need, who didn't need a wheelchair accessible apartment, but okay. would not be able to rent an apartment in which they couldn't use the stove or the dishwasher or the washer and dryer. Can yeah. you make accommodations for those people by changing out appliances? How would that work? I'm sure that would have to be, it would probably be a reasonable accommodation request. Um, that they would have to submit, um, which then, you know, we would have to look over, obviously, and, and there needs to be, you know, obviously evidence that it's a medical need um, and there. And then from there, we would make a decision, you know, if it was something that we could do and if it was necessary. But I don't okay. see, yeah, but that is something, you know what I mean? We obviously are going to be, you know, open to reasonable accommodations, um, you know, for people who need them. Well, sometimes it's an extra expense for sure. Um, but you know, it, it, there is, there are other levels of accessibility, not just, can you get in and can you reach the cabinets? Right. But it, yeah. recently there, there is this new area of inaccessibility did not used to be a problem, but it is now. No, I, I yeah, no, I appreciate that feedback. I mean, it's good to, it's good to think about and something to know that, you know, maybe we didn't think of, you know, beforehand. So I mean, it's definitely, I think an important aspect to think about. Okay. Well, that's good. Do, um, does anybody have any questions about, um, or any comments or any suggestions? That, or how many of these are completely built? Is this like ready to go, no changes or? Yep, or, yeah, the, yeah, we're set for August 1st for move-ins. Um, so they're, they're pretty much all done. We're in like the final phases of just kind of doing the final touches of everything here. Um, they're mostly hmm. working on common space areas at this point. Oh, somebody had a question. Um, mm-hmm. are, um, now, some of your apartments are low income and some of your apartments are handicapped uh, accessible. Um, mm-hmm. But there are a lot of people who need handicapped accessible apartments who don't need low income apartments. Mm-hmm. So how does that work? Do you have specific okay. apartments for low income people or they just you have a certain number of spaces and when they're filled, they're filled? How does yeah. that work? Yeah. So in total, we have 11 affordable units and two of them um, are the ADA units. So we have two affordable ADA units and then we have three just regular market rate ADA units. Uh-huh. And are there one bedrooms? How, sorry, uh, how many uh, f- that are f- uh, at market price oh, yeah, uh, that are ADA? There's three. Three, okay. Yep. And are they all, all one, one bedrooms or are they all much larger? How, what size are they? They are not. Let me just double check my notes because I need a special to come up. Um, so we have, for market rate, we have a one bedroom, a two bedroom, and a three bedroom that are, that are ADA. Okay, thank you. Yep. And then for the affordable, we have a one bedroom and a two bedroom. Hmm. What is the market rate on a two bedroom? So um, they do, they, for these, for the, for the ADA ones, just because we do have five different styles of technically of two bedrooms. So if you're specifically asking about these units, um, let me just see here. So this unit that I'm in right now, which is a Steamboat A, um, was for $2,150. And how about if a two bedroom that wasn't ADA accessible? Um, that just, the price didn't change because it's ADA. Um, that's just based on floor plan. So it's, this one's considered a steamboat A, one bedroom. So it's twenty one fifty. The price is the same market rate. You know whether you got an ADA steamboat A or a non ADA steamboat A. Oh, so you have like one bedrooms that are more than five hundred square feet. Yes. Uh, uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We also have anybody studios. have? Wait, say that again. So they also have studios. They have studios. Uh huh. We have one studio in the whole building. Oh, sorry, <laughs> uh, one studio. Okay, so the market rate is twenty one fifty for the five hundred square foot. Yep. Wow. Wow. That's, we do that's Brooklyn kind of numbers. Wow. 
Does that is that is Brooklyn kind of numbers like that. What was that? Does it include all utilities? It does. It includes all the utilities. So it, it is going to cover the heat, the hot water, your central air covers the electric. Plus, they all come with in unit washers and dryers. Um, and high speed internet is included. So the only separate utility you would have to worry about, which is if you wanted it, would be cable. Would be what? Cable. If you wanted cable. 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 That okay. Was okay. Utility. Okay. I heard you. Okay. What did you say the two bedroom was? We didn't get a number for that one. Yep. So our two bedrooms um, right now are starting at 2,900. How much? 2,900. 2900. Wow. That's, I mean- I can tell you my son who lives in Brooklyn pays the same rent for a one bedroom that you are charging in Amherst. I live That's on the other side of town from where Aspen Heights is <laughs> in a two bedroom that is not as accessible as that. And we pay, if, if all of our things are included, we pay about 2,200. In a two bedroom. That is market rate, as appalling as that sounds, it's, it is, and it's very high. Well, it's this is 29. Yeah. This is yeah. Okay. But it's wow. newer. Right. Okay. So ours is st still only six years old. It's still considered what newer. What is the address of the property? It's 408 Northampton Road. So it's right on Route 9. Well, this has been really helpful um, yeah. and educational for uh, myself and I, I and 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 perhaps um, all the DAAC members. Um, and yeah. so, if there are any other questions or comments related to the ADA units, um, we could let Rachel get back to work. Um, okay. Were, were there great. any? Thank you. That was it. Okay. Well, thank, thank you so you, much, Rachel, Rachel and you. to your camera yeah. person. <laughs> Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. No, they did a lot of things right. This. Thanks. Okay. It was good to see this. I've never seen an apartment like that. Yeah. That's pretty it unbelievable. Works. 2150 in Amherst. That's high. For 500 square feet, which isn't huge. My God. Okay. Yeah, we have 800. So we also have, ours is smaller. Ours is a two bedroom. That's 850 square feet that we pay $1,700 a month in rent, but that doesn't include anything. And they were saying that it had that, those had central air. Ours doesn't even have central air. Right. So ours include, you know, so we have to pay heat and electric and internet above. Yeah. So it else. adds up, so, it adds up about the same as the one bedroom in this one. Yeah. Wow. That's pretty amazing. Yeah. Okay. Thank Rangan you for Nigeria arranging is, that, is Maureen. Yeah, that absolutely. Was, that was yeah. really interesting. And um, I do know that that blind woman who has to literally pay someone to do her laundry because in her luxury building, she cannot operate any of the machines. Isn't that awful? Anyway. So I um, luckily remembered that I, I uh, if you know, if, if, if this worked on everyone's camera, I made Rachel's camera spotlight uh, spotlighted. So the, the whole screen was put on Rachel's camera, but I can't seem to stop that. So uh, we, we're not in gallery view, not a big deal, but. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So we had a couple things. One, you, what about the grant? Um, yeah. So um, the MOD grant, hold on one yeah. second. So yeah, the MOD grant, it, um, they've started construction. Um, and I oh, this is the one from two years ago. Yeah, so oh, they okay, are okay. Um, finishing up redoing the sidewalk on Pleasant Walk, uh, which connects uh, uh, East Pleasant Street to um, the Boltwood Garage. Uh, it's that sort of walkway that connects the two. It's along where the old Starbucks used to be located. And um, they're also starting, um, I noticed uh, work at the crosswalk adjacent to that walkway, um, the crosswalk that's in front of CVS. And then they'll be redoing the crosswalk on Coles Lane, I think it's called, at Coles Lane in East Pleasant Street, uh, which is located next to um, the Brewer's Bagel location. 
So that's pretty exciting to see that, you know, those are being re, uh, being uh, reconstructed um, and will be. Yep. Question. Sure. Um, that's the one on Coles Lane. Um, what's that going to do to the bus stop there? Nothing. There, nothing. You can still get on and off the bus. Correct. Yeah. It won't be impacting the, that bus stop at all. Oh, okay. Thanks. Sure. Yeah. yeah. And do you have any word on the new grant that you applied for for this year? Uh, no word yet. We should be finding out uh, by the end of June. Uh, June 30th is um, when plus or minus is when they'll be making the announcements. And, um, you know, you, the, this board's recommendations were really pivotal um, about um, providing um, crosswalk improvements at the corner of Prey and East Pleasant Street that wasn't originally as part of the application, but uh, once I passed that information along, the uh, staff immediately said, oh, that's a great idea. And Thank you, Marty. Um, yeah, and <laughs> so excellent. the proposal includes uh, a rapid, uh, rectangular rapid flashing beacons, which will be powered um, by, uh, will be solar powered. And um, the solar energy actually can accommodate for um, audio um, signals as well. Oh, cool. So uh, conduit isn't needed. Um, for oh. um, that, so uh, you know that will be the crosswalk and haze enhancement, as well as just you know redoing the crosswalk itself, and then and then um, doing the same at the um, Prey Triangle Cottage Street intersection will be the same uh, improvements. So hopefully we get the the grant um, money to do that work. Um, everyone feels that that's a great. Uh, project and you know if we don't we have all that material gathered so if it's not this grant it'll be hopefully a future grant so and which would be just ready to just to go so so well done all right and what what is the next um the other item i turned off my speech there was another old business mm, it was just those two um and then uh, approval of meeting minutes oh okay i had a question um I know that um, we talked at the last meeting about requesting the operational status of the accessible signals all over town and Guilford wrote to you. Um, the reason that I never contacted Marty about a letter that we were gonna write to the town manager was that you sent us a letter very shortly after our meeting that said Guilford said he would give us the information we requested about the accessible, uh, the operational status of the accessible signals um, by the end of June, in late June, he said, right? Yeah, so um, after speaking with uh, staff, we're working with DPW to get the list of existing audible signals in town and the um, the current conditions of them. And um, we hope um, that, you know, we believe that DPW can provide that by the end of June. So, um, yeah, so I would expect in the July, the, the next meeting in July, we should be able to um, review the, that list. Okay. I did write the letter, Marty, just to let you know, yeah. but I never contacted you. I trust you. Because, because I didn't send it because, and I didn't send it to you because I wanted to uh, give him a chance to make good on his promise. But if we don't have it by the end of June, so what I'd like from Maureen is you get in touch with us, please on the 30th and let us know if you've got it because I have this ready uh, letter ready to go for Marty's approval and then we can send it um, if we don't get cooperation by the end of June because we need to have those signals operational. And I guess I'm, I'm unhappy because he dragged this out so long that there's no way to budget anything extra to fix them now because the new budget starts July 1st. Um, so I'm afraid that there may be, unless he has some money budgeted that he never spent, um, I don't know where he's gonna get money to fix them, but that needs to happen. So um, I'm interested to know what we find out. And hopefully the information that we get 
um, although we didn't request it specifically, but hopefully the information we get about these signals will be the operational status and um, what's involved in fixing them. You think we could get that? Um, I can certainly ask. Okay. <laughs> Um, because I don't think there's anything budgeted to fix them. It's not been a high priority. So um, anyway. I wonder if the town manager should be aware of our request. Well, this is the letter that I wrote, um, but I didn't send it because Guilford responded to Maureen quickly that we would have the information we requested by the end of June which didn't have to do with how much it would cost to fix them. So I guess we'll just wait for the other information, but I, I will send the letter on July 1st, if we don't have, I'll send it to you, Marty, on July 1st, if you haven't heard from him on June 30th, because I don't think we should give him any more time. It's been three months. March 23rd was the original contact between Maureen and him about this topic in writing and they had already discussed it without having it in writing. So that's a long time. Yeah. Good for following up on it. Okay, anybody have anything else for new business before we do the minutes? Or old business or whatever kind of business. <laughs> that's a monkey business, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, everybody's good? Okay, um, the minutes from May 11th. Does anybody have um, uh, suggestions, corrections, or a motion? My motion we accept. Second the motion. Okay, Marty and Xander. Does anybody have any corrections or additions? I don't either. You take great notes, Maureen. Yeah. Really outstanding you. notes. I couldn't take notes that are one tenth as good. So thank you. Thank you. Really. Um, okay. Roll call on the minutes. Um, Marty. Approve. Um, Alexander. Approve. Zara. Saren. Approved. Lise. Approved. Ruth. That's it. Approved. And I would approve too. So six, nothing. All right. Do we have anything else to discuss? You do have a general public comment period. Oh, I'm sorry. Is there um, anyone here? So if anyone from the public wishes to speak, um, you would press nine, I think, if you're calling in. Or is it six? Uh, I always forget, I think star nine, star nine, um, if, if you're interested in speaking. Okay, I don't see anyone raising their hand. Is there anyone there? There is a person calling who is calling in from a phone. Uh-huh, okay. They're a listener. Okay. Um, okay, so um, the next meeting. July 13th. Uh, actually, uh, the, we meet. Oh, we meet on the second Tuesday. Yeah, it would be the thirteenth. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. Any any reason we can't plan to do that? Because we can't get away with oh. this. The uh... well, we'll let you. I'll have to let you know if. Well, so we might have uh, to meet in person. That's the only problem. Yeah. So I'll know by tomorrow. Well, I will know by the perhaps by the end of the week, whether um, the state passes the legislation uh, about virtual meetings. And so I guess we'll just take it, uh, take it from there. And um, if it is in person, I need to contact the Stavro Center to see if um, they're still willing to host our meetings there physically. I, I don't know if they're open to the public. Uh, Sarah? I, a, I have a case uh, going on with Stavros, so I will not be able to participate our meetings if it is held at Stavros. Oh, okay. 
So, uh, and we only have, I mean, Tori's the only employee of Stavros anymore. It used to be that there were three. Now there's just Tori. Um, so, well, so where, you know, the town hall, we're happy to host uh, meetings in the town hall or, you know, I could reach, I'm sure there is a space in the bank center. Um, so we can look at different options, but let's just hold off until the end of this week and hope that the state passes legislation so we can sort of avoid dealing with this, at least for the summer. Um, and um, so I, I'll email everyone um, if and when the state passes legislation and we'll take it from there. But if it is in person, do folks have a preference if it's in town hall versus the bank center versus another town building that I'm not thinking of? As long as it's walkable, um, it, you know, accessible for everybody. Parking is an issue too. Banks well, is terrible parking. I don't know town hall parking. Not so good. Middle school has lots of parking. It's a town oh, building. Oh, I would uh, prefer as we get closer to when st UMass staff have to be on campus, the closer we are to campus, the easier time I'm going to have. Okay. Xander, do you take a vehicle or do you take public yes. transportation? I have a vehicle. You have a vehicle. I have a vehicle. So okay. for Xander, well, with down um, like middle uh, school town would be okay for Xander too. Yeah. Well, middle the middle school, school is actually um, through the regional school system uh, so is not use it. Okay. Only the elementary so. schools are are town of Amherst. Yeah, but property. isn't LSSE using the middle school? Ooh, loophole. They are. Um, yeah. I, well, okay. Well, I'll, I'll look into it. I, yeah, I don't really know. I don't know. This is beyond my. Yeah, they have park, parking. So. So I one LSSE, that's right. Can. Is that what LSSE play I did was definitely well, at the middle certainly school. walkable for me. Um, <laughs> probably a lot less walkable for you, but definitely walkable for you. Is it? It's close to Clark House. It's, uh, it's fairly okay. I guess it is Chestnut walkable. Street. Um, it's probably a. Ha it's a half, half a mile. mile. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll, I'll look into it. I, I just, I okay. honestly yeah, I just I mean, don't know. I just as wonder, as um, I mean, it just hit me when she said parking. I was trying to think of any any building that might have parking and certainly schools have parking and it's not used in the summer. So um, during the school year, yeah. it's a different story. Yep. But the state, the legislature might figure it out by then. Um, Hopefully. Um, the the middle also, school could work. Um, LSA, LSSE is using it. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I think we, uh, uh, I didn't get a chance to read all the regulations that's being considered. I wonder if a hybrid model is involved with it. I it think could they be. Are, yeah, I, I think so. They might be looking at stuff they like that. Be. Yeah. I mean, for those of us with uh, transportation issues, that would be perfect. Yeah, we might need to rotate who has to be there. Pat, did you have something? Yeah, I was just going to say if the there's a quorum of the committee that meets uh, in person, other members can well, participate remotely, but there may be a limit on the number of times you can participate remotely. So I'll try to find, or Maureen, you're even better at yeah. finding things than me, uh, but that might be helpful uh, in addressing Saren's concern. Yeah. Well, Frankly, that's the current. Know. That's what the current law. But there is, um, there are proposals for alternative legislation. So yeah. yes, no, I know. Yeah, we we don't know what they're going to do, and um, yeah. So it would be really interesting to see what the legislature does. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll I'll certainly let everyone know as as that becomes available. Because we, you know, on this committee, every every person on this committee has a transportation issue. Yeah, Except true. maybe, well, Marty maybe doesn't, and no, Xander maybe doesn't. You do? Yeah, partial. Me. Ah, okay. Depending well, so on the parking place, that's my issue. True. Right. And but it has some to of be us have, accessible. you know, some of us have more. I know Tori has definite transportation issues, but she has been able yeah. to get a van from Stavros in the past sometimes. So I probably um, have the least transportation issues. Okay. I have a call. And we might and need I to rotate the chairmanship about, you know, who's entitled to run the meeting. 
based on what Pat said about how many meetings you're allowed to attend remotely. And, you know, we might have to figure that out. But with this particular committee, the, uh, you know, everybody has good reason to not be yeah. on site. So. Um, I'll take a closer, although I forwarded everyone the email from earlier about yeah about this I, I didn't take a close look at reading the attachments um so i'll take a look at that and see if there could be a reasonable accommodation that could be made for this committee um that, cool. that the town could entertain hmm. i mean it does seem like oh my goodness <laughs> i was wondering what was oh my goodness I want Especially to after this committee. pandemic, we all became experts on Zoom. Yeah, <laughs> sorry, I just laughed because Pat's cat suddenly walked by. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah. No, I mean, it, it would make sense that if a committee is going to get permission to do this, it would make sense yeah. that it would be this committee that would start that process. Yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, to... the town needs to follow the open meeting law, which is right regulated yep. by the state um right. so yep. that's yes i understand but uh, well, if there's something that the town can do maybe maybe there could be a reasonable yeah. accommodation right. provided for this committee at least right elisa it brewer be, was one of the people who testified at that hearing mm -hmm. right. um, mm -hmm. ruth did uh, you have something it would certainly be ironic if this committee couldn't have accessibility to the, to yeah. the, to the meeting <laughs> you know with a hybrid model you know Yep. So, when yeah. is that decision going to be made at the state level? They don't um, understand that, but it still doesn't take away from the irony. Of yes, oh, yeah, you're yeah, absolutely yeah. right. Yeah, um, ru uh, it's uh, rumor has it that they may pass something tonight, oh. but I, I don't know if that's true or not. Um, but m m hopefully, um, Pat, um, if you know the town council has these discussions, perhaps Pat could chime in about. Um, you know, if possible, if a reasonable accommodation could be provided for members of this committee to, I don't, I, I don't know, I don't know what what that would look yeah. like or the, yeah, I don't know. Um, Provide transportation to all the members. There you go. That's required. <laughs> That's a simple, reasonable accommodation. Wait, not just transportation, yeah. but transportation that doesn't involve a one-hour wait on either exactly. end. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's, That's the, the transportation we need. Yeah. That's get on the bus. Beep beep. Eric. Yeah. Well, yeah. we'll look at. Uh, I mean, and Pat will certainly um, look and into we'll it. Bring on that up. Yeah. I had counselor comments on the Monday, and if I can get some information before then, I will share it with Maureen and and the rest of you sure Pat, and, and I'll talk about... to I'll talk to staff tomorrow about this um to see if some sort of creative solution if if allowed could be provided Pat what is coming up about Pomeroy Lane tonight anything uh there's no meeting tonight oh there isn't Woohoo! No, so I'm, gonna, wow. I'm leaving Yay. this meeting and and zooming with my son and his wife in about, I'm gonna Jump Yay. off at five. Okay. Thank God. <laughs> well, if there isn't anything else, uh, okay. do we want to make a motion? We can to adjourn. adjourn. Yep. Make okay. a motion to adjourn. Thank Second. you all very much. Thank okay. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.